Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Aaron. I'm a junior doctor working in London. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what I like to call the retrospective approach to preparing for medical school OSCEs. And this is the approach that my friends and I use to prepare for our final year OSCEs at Cambridge Med School. And it was that year that I won the prize for the highest OSCE mark in the year. And I pretty much attribute that entirely to using this approach, which allowed us to use our time effectively to prepare for our OSCEs without spending hours and hours on the wards. So hopefully by the end of this video, some of you will be convinced and you give it a go and you find it useful. As usual, everything will be timestamped below in the description and I'll put it in the pinned comments as well. So for now, let's jump straight into it. So just a quick intro on what I specifically mean by OSCE in this video. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on your clinical examination station. So for example, your cardiovascular exam, your respiratory exam, your thyroid exam, your breast examination, etc, etc. So outside the station, you'll be presented with a short brief, something on the lines of you're the FY1 doctor and you've been asked to perform a respiratory examination on this patient. You have seven minutes to perform the examination and then three minutes to present your findings and answer some questions from the examiner. In terms of how OSCEs are marked, medical schools usually use one of two ways. The first way being a kind of mark sheet grid where you're marked on every step of the examination routine and how you respond to questions from the examiner in the viva. And then some med schools use a more global score where your examiner marks you on specific domains. Essentially, it doesn't really matter how your OSCE is marked. All medical schools are looking for the same kind of thing, which is a student who's confident on all three parts of your OSCE, which is the examination routine, the presentation of your findings and the viva. So if we have a look at these three things separately, for the examination routine, you want to be able to perform every step of the examination confidently and also try and pick up on some of the positive signs. So for example, if you see a scar indicating that a particular surgery has taken place. Then onto the presenting your findings part, you want to be able to present your findings systematically and clearly. And for the viva, you want to be able to answer the questions confidently and systematically while explaining your thinking. And the questions are usually quite generic. So for example, what's the most likely diagnosis? What are your differential diagnosis? And how would you investigate this patient? Something on those lines. So the way that almost every medical student, including myself, gets taught to prepare for OSCEs is to use a prospective approach where you start from the top and work your way downwards. And that seems to make sense. So we start by learning our examination routine, every single step of it. We then practice it on our friends. And then we go and practice it on patients on the ward. But now we're going to have a look at the retrospective approach where we start from the bottom and move upwards. So the retrospective approach has three parts to it. Number one, you start by making an OSCE cases list. So this is a list of common cases that are likely to come up in each particular station. And these are usually general things like chronic stable conditions with signs that are easy to pick up on. Number two, once you've made your OSCE cases list, you then want to prepare your viva for each of those cases. And you can split this up with your friends to save time. And for each case, the things that you want to prepare for in your viva are things like the positive signs in that case, the typical findings and some sort of model presentation of those findings, risk factors for the disease, any signs of decompensation, that's just a way of saying complications, how you can investigate this patient and how you'd manage this patient. And you can get all of that information online from Google or YouTube, but if you do really want a book, then you can try Cases for Paces. I'll put a link in the description. And finally, step number three is where you prepare your examination routine. And the way I did this is having a simple table. So on the far left-hand column, I'd have each step of the examination routine. And once again, I use Google or YouTube to work out each different step. And then in the middle column, I'd have the specific signs that I was looking for in each of those steps. And we already know what signs we're looking for from all our prep we did for our viva for all of our cases. And then in the far right-hand column, I'd have my speech. So what I'd be saying to the patient and the examiner while I was doing the examination. And that's it. That's the three step retrospective approach for preparing for your OSCEs. And after you've done that, you can go over your examination routine and your viva over and over with things like spaced repetition. And in your OSCE exam, even if you don't get an exact case, you'll be so well drilled, you'll know exactly what signs to look out for, and you should be able to put together your findings very systematically. So this is our respiratory station. We've read our brief and we have seven minutes to complete the examination routine. We start and we're going along doing our examination routine. We know exactly what signs to look out for because we've used the retrospective approach. And the signs that we find are that this patient has clubbing and then moving onto the chest, there's reduced chest expansion bilaterally. And then on auscultation, we think there are bilateral fine end inspiratory crackles that don't clear on coughing. So hopefully using the retrospective approach, we have an idea that this patient probably has pulmonary fibrosis 
Now what we need to do is present our findings in a clear, systematic manner. So the structure for presenting that I like to use is I start with an introductory summary sentence where if I have an idea of the diagnosis, I like to try and commit to that from the start. And the reason I do this is because there's been loads of times where I'm presenting a case and I list out all the findings and then at the end I am asked to commit to a diagnosis. What's your most likely diagnosis? And I'm just like, uh, I just haven't had time to process the information. So for me, what works is if I commit to something at the start, I'm more likely to be confident when I present my findings. After that introductory sentence, we then go for the positive findings. So these are all the signs that we've picked up from our examination routine. We then list any relevant negative findings and we'll talk about what exactly a relevant negative finding is. And then there's a summary sentence at the end, which is your most likely diagnosis, just kind of repeating what you said at the beginning. Okay, so for this case, the ideal presentation would be something like this. I performed a respiratory examination on this patient who I believe has signs of pulmonary fibrosis. My main positive findings are digital clubbing. Moving onto the chest, there was reduced chest expansion bilaterally and on auscultation, I could hear bilateral fine end inspiratory crackles in the lower zones that did not clear on coughing. My relevant negative findings are reassuringly this patient is currently not requiring oxygen and there are no signs of decompensation such as a CO2 retention flap or core pulmonale. And this points towards pulmonary fibrosis. So that's a standard presentation format and I'm sure you'd get a really, really good score with that. But just to kind of show off to your examiners at the end, you could also add the absence of any signs of rheumatoid arthritis or any signs of dermatomyositis or any signs of Cushing syndrome, plus taking into account the patient's age makes the most likely diagnosis idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And hopefully that makes you stand out and get a better global score from your examiner. So by using the retrospective approach where we prepare for our viva first, we know there are lots of causes for pulmonary fibrosis. And by adding that in at the end of your presentation, it makes you look really brainy. It looks like you've processed the absence of all these signs when you're doing your examination routine. But actually, sadly, we're not brainy. We've just done the hard work before. And then after you've presented your findings, you'll have a little vibe with the examiner. They might ask something like, what are your other differentials? So in this case, that would be things like bronchiectasis or chronic lung abscess. And then maybe something like, how would you investigate this patient? And with those kind of questions, always try and categorize. So bedside tests, blood tests, imaging and then special tests and all of that information hopefully you've prepared already in your viva okay so hopefully you found that useful that was an overview of the retrospective approach to preparing for your oskis that my friends and i used during our final year at med school it seemed to work well for me and my friends and when we were thrown a curveball of a case we were still able to pick up on the signs present our findings systematically and go through the viva based on the content that we had practiced over and over during those late nights in Cambridge. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did like the video, then please leave a comment and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm in the process of putting all of my med school notes onto a website. So hopefully that's useful as well. Thank you for watching guys. I really hope you found it useful and good luck with your medical school OSCEs.